open to the topic of the session, which is Fargate and ECS deploy. Uh, your elastic uh, container service uh, deployment with Fargate. What is Fargate? Uh, apart from infrastructure, if you want to deploy uh, your applications, we use the AWS Fargate. Uh, basically, reduces the overhead for thinking about post because Fargate scales and uh, uh, it matches your resource requirement. And obviously, you pay as you go. And if you want to increase or decrease that, that's how the payment shuffles, right? So uh, easily, it can be easily integrated with your CloudWatch, CloudTrail, AWS services, right? So making the architecture less complex, we can manage ECS with EKS, right? Uh, basically used for uh, architectures where we have a whole lot of APIs, a whole lot of microservices, or web app serverless applications, right? If you want to scale our containers, if you want to, uh, you know, have easy easier integration with CloudWatch, CloudTrail, and monitoring services, uh, basically payment on the game, on the go. That's how we'll, or that's where we'll use end up using Fargate, right? Uh, so I'll do one thing. I'll uh, pass on to Vikas. Uh, over to you, Vikas. Uh, thank you, sir. And welcome to the session. So I'm sharing my screen. OK. So everyone can see my screen? Yep. This is it. OK. So hello, everyone. Welcome to the session. So the topic for this session is deploy ACR image on AWS ECS Fargate using the Terraform script. My name is Vikas Vasis. I am a software consultant here at Nordos. So before beginning the session, let's look at our Nordos etiquettes. First one is punctuality. So try to join the session before five minutes earlier, before the starting of the session, so that you can conclude on the time. Second is our feedback. So make sure to submit a constructive feedback for all the session as it is very helpful for the presenter. Third one, silent mode. So please keep your device on silent so, so there is no unwanted distraction. And last one is our disturbance. Do not chit chat during the session. So let's begin with this session. So our agenda for today's session is what is ECR, features and alternatives, what is AWS ECS Fargate features and the de deployment strategy diagram? And the last one will be the demo. So let's start with the what is ECR. So as from the full form, it says that Amazon Elastic Container Registry. So it is a registry in an AWS management container emergency service that is secure, scalable, and reliable. Amazon ECS support private repository with resources based permission using AWS IAM roles. Amazon Elastic Container Registry is an AWS product that stores, manage, and deploys Docker images, which are managed and clusters of Amazon EC2 instance. Amazon ECR allows all AWS developer to save configuration and quickly move them into a production environment, thus reducing overall workloads. Okay, features. So it is highly secure as policies can confer configured to manage, familiar to AWS users and easy to use as there are, is a huge number of community of AWS and many of projects are aligned with the AWS cloud services. So it is easy for them to use. Uh, no upfront fees or commitments. So it is very transparent and tightly integrated with Amazon ECS and the Docker CLI. So it is based on the Docker CLI out. So before beginning to the next part, so let me come up with this some point, like it is enhanced security. For example, using the credentials of IAM users, we can only use the ECR images so some of the alternatives of ec are because because your voice is breaking 
One second. Uh, it is clear now. Yeah. Okay. So some of the alternatives of ECR are like JFOG RT Factory, Azure Container Registry, Nexus Repository Manager, Google Container Registry, and the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So come up with the next topic that is what is AWS ECS Fargate? So AWS ECS Fargate is a technology that you can use with the Amazon ECS to run the containers without having to manage servers or clusters of Amazon EC2 instance. With AWS Fargate, you no longer have to provision, configure, or scale clusters of virtual machines to run containers. This removes the need to choose server types, decide when to scale your cluster, or optimize cluster packaging. When you run your tasks and services with the Fargate launch type, you package your application in containers, specifically the CPU and memory requirements, define network and IAM policies, and launch the application. Each Fargate task has its own isolation boundaries and does not share the underlying kernel, CPU resources, memory resources, or ease or elastic network interface with another task. For example, if you are deploying an, an application we, we on our EC2 instance, we have to up, uh, run up the, for the UI, in, uh, UI application, then we have to deploy the another instance for the backend and for the database, we have to uh, up, spin up the another instance. For using the ECS Fargate, it will manage all the, all the application resources under its own and run the same of the containers by its own. So, it, so it, it is not bother about the developer to how it will the application will perform. So features enhance security. ECS has built in security. All of the images are stored in a container registry that is only accessible through HTTPS because they are truly encrypted and can only be permitted by identification and management standards. It saves money. We can obtain a high density of any on an in situ instance, thanks to the ability to schedule several containers on the same node. Extensible, since the environment won't matter because it will be contained inside a container. The program will function precisely as it did in the past. AWS is Fargate is integrated with Amazon ECS. You will not have to worry about performing host management planning or learning about task segregation safety for containers. If you mainly specify your user's requirement and choose it as your launching option in the terminal or CLI needed to execute the container, Fargate will start taking care of all your scaling and architecture. Although there are some limitations of AWS ECS also. You, can, you can't alter the instance type or size when hybridation is enabled. When you hybrid an instance, the data which is stored in the instance is lost. Or you can't hybrid any instance for more than 150 GB of RAM. And there are many companies using ECS like 3D EY, Aerobotics, and Autodex. So here we are with the deployment strategy diagram. So in this diagram, there is a GitHub repo where the developer pushed the code on the EC2 instance. From where there is a Jenkins server, which will trigger the pipeline. It will, will be build the code and deploy and push the ECR image using the Jenkins script. After that, then the Terraform script will be called using the manual CLI approach and they will deploy the services and enable and invoke the ALB and the ECS, which will deploy and run the AWS Fargate. So let us come with the uh, demo part. So here we have a running Jenkins master. First, we need to connect to it.
ข้างนอกเฮฟิสเซอร์เวอร์เจนคินสคริปต์ where what we are doing is giving the environment variables like account ID default region the e- image repo name which will be created on the our ECR so we have to define our repo also for that and the version of using the build number environment variable of Jenkins and the repository URI using the AWS account ID default region and image repo which are all integrated tools as it is a Maven based application so we are using a tool for Maven checking so there are multiple stages so step by step there is a first we are checking the docker version then we are building the image then we are using uh, viewing the image then we are logging into the ecr and then we are building the image into the ec and pushing it to it after that we will we will run the application using the terraform scripts so first let me push some comment on the jenkins which are which is considering the GitHub repo. So this is our the repo. Let me log in. So this is our pipeline which have some configuration like we are using the git, a git repository credentials and the script of the jenkins file So I'm committing one comment. Let me put the token. For that, I need to close my sharing screen for a, for a minute, for a second only. So I push one commit on our repo. So there is a new commit. We will build the pipeline.
Okay, there is one error. Let me solve it quickly. Let me rebuild the Python. So here on the console output, we can see all these shady steps are done, like checking the Docker version, build the application of Spring that is on the Maven base, uh, showing the image, logging into the ECR, build the our Docker file, tagging the image with the version tag 29. That is our current build number and pushing it to the ECR. So here, on our ECR, we have a repository with the name sample demo. We have 27 build. If we refresh, we will look at and we find that we have a version number 29. Now, and so as for now, there is no ALB created, no cluster has been created for ECS, and there is no task definition and no cloud watch. So now Using our variables file, we will just change the version tag number that is v29. Do the terraform, use your terraform commands to initialize first. And we will show up the plan. So this will all the configuration of VPC will be created. Subnet public IP will be created. Subnet public IP, private, all the things will be there. Easier task, root table. I will explain also the scripts. First we'll see the practical one. It is creating. Still, I will explain one by one all the files. So here on the ALB, it is Amazon Load Balancer. Here we are using the name, the subnet, and the group ID, uh, security group, which will uh, on which ingress and egress are written. Then we have the target, the app port on which on which the port on the port where the container will be up and application will be deployed and running. Then we have the VPC and target type. Then we have some healthy checks. How the interval will be do? How will be the protocol, matcher, timeout, and path? Then when we will have an ARN, Amazon Load Balancer, and the port and the listener. And there will be having default action that is our target group. Then on the ECS, we will give the name of the cluster. Then there we have a JSON file for it, written all the configuration of how many CPU and usage of RAM will be there application in the of uh, image of which image we'll be using that we are using a version of 29 of Jenkins build number application port target cpu target memory and the regulators region like on then in the ac ecs task definitions we will give the name of the family of the ecs task the i am role network mode the network task uh, net task definition requires compatibility cpu and memory then on the AC ECS service, we will give the name, cluster ID, task definition, ARN, app count, how many of containers will be up on how on the application we are running. So here we have given the three. Let's see, you can see here. And the service longest type, launch type, it is our target. And assign the public IP is, is enabled, that is true. 
and there will be a load balancer name container and port then we will have a small file we see using the logs for, for the cloud watch tension policy name of the file and the group name there are some network configuration that are using a ciw 172.17.0.0.16 easy count that is our our the private count for the subnet availability zones vpc main id internet gateway and other and the net gateway so output they will be given a aw alb host name that will be the dns for, from where we will hit and see how our application is performing provider for we have some credentials that are also stored in variables file access key secret key and our region and this is our im policy we are using the default policy for the ec2 acs and some ingress and egress security group which are compatible with our application so let's see our, has our application been deployed or not so it is deployed with the alb host name my load balancer one 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 three one eight eight so after hitting on the application dns it is running so i have taken this example from internet so i will hit the name and it will show me the hey because welcome to kevotech we will see this example and here as there were no log group or uh, log group and no task definition cluster or alb was created after running our terraform script all the things are are up we have our alb we have our cluster which are running our three current tasks on single service we have our task definition and we have our log group here we can see how our application is performing So this all was needed to the demo. Now, uh, any questions? No, we have any questions? You I think it was a <clears throat> very good session with the demo. If you have any query, you can contact me also. On vikas.pasichardenolders.com Yep. Guys, if you don't have any question, we'll probably wrap it up early then. All right, guys. Uh, if you have no questions, uh, we are good to wrap this up. Thanks a lot, Vikas. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Uh, Rahul and Vikas, uh, I'm so sorry, but uh, can we please hold on for some more moments because uh, we need to have the session for at least half an hour. All right. Uh, we'll wait for another uh, few minutes. If you have yeah. any questions, any query regarding Fargate, ECS, or um, let's say serverless architecture, how to improve uh, security through, you know, isolations, how ECS and EKS ports run there in, in their own dedicated environment. Feel free to ask us. Guys, please don't forget that we have uh, the Spotlight Award also with uh, Vikas will be giving. So please uh, feel free, come up and have the discussion, have your queries and let's have a healthy discussion.
nobody has any queries this is amazing you are amazing vikas i'm sure the session is wonderful that's why nobody has any queries uh but then if uh, nobody has any queries then maybe you or rahul might share some of uh, the new insights about the topic so i can share one uh, scenario we are like in our some projects we are using the fargate to deploy our application and run on the eks cluster and using our Q kubernetes deployment strategy also so it is it is very beneficial that using the fargate it will manage all the our container and service easily without ha having a uh, looking at the cost scenario which will be more beneficial for the all the uh, developers and the account holders also apart from that anyone want to uh, uh, share or ask something related to not only just about the topic or something related to aws also you can feel free to ask or share Rahul, uh, probably you might also uh, add up some insights about the topic. Yeah, sure, guys. Uh, uh, if you already know, we already are using Fargate in Ostra uh, in in a uh, couple of more projects as well. So uh, if you see uh, the use case, uh, they are different in both the projects, right? So uh, we probably end up using uh, 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 Fargate with ECS or EKS. Uh, depending on what are you so if you want to pay only for uh, you know you know depending on the infrastructure right if if you have a bigger infrastructure when provisioning is a problem where um, uh, provisioning every day and we are worried about post I, I think that's a good example wherein we can use uh market right or uh, let us say if devsecops if you talk about devsecops uh, most of uh, us us use because we want to have let's say uh, he can he can in their own dedicated environment right so that sort of isolation um uh, fargate provides by default right so we don't have to do anything else in that uh, whereas uh, if you if you see you just build a container image with fargate right and we define in our configuration file how much memory we want to use how much compute resources uh, are required and that is it right that is the only uh, only thing we have to do as soon as we do that will probably pay only um, uh, as we go on the run right and as i said earlier as well if we have a lot of web application wherein we have multiple apis millions of api rates and microservices and most probably serverless architecture let's say we do not want to use kubernetes as well i think that's where we can use it as well so uh, amazon ecs uh, also provide windows containers if we if we want to use them uh, most probably with dotnet um, environments but uh, uh you know uh, looking at uh, the previous use cases i have personally worked on uh, i probably will use it at uh, you know um uh, from a management point of view right uh, if you want if i want to have a look at the cost if i want to have a look at uh, just my application not as the infrastructure because infrastructure i can probably manage with infrastructure as a core tool right with ansible or terraform if they are right uh, but if i if i want to deploy and manage only my application and if i have a developer uh who knows how to use it he'll probably end up using uh, uh, aws uh, services as well for example for monitoring because it it would be easier for them to integrate cloudwatch cloudtrail right or uh, container inside right and then we can probably have a better uh, uh, synergies between the teams right so uh, that's how i i i'll probably look at the use cases of uh, fargate if you have any any questions around them if you have any questions around security or post optimization You can probably ask us right away, or you can have our email ID, devops at the red nodes dot com. We can uh, we can communicate over that as well. So guys, I I hope uh, this session made sense to um, um, a lot of uh, you. Uh, I hope uh, uh, it made sense to you. It may you might end up using it uh, somewhere uh, in your career. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks a lot, Vikas, for the session. Um, Yeah. Thank you, Rahul. Thank you, everyone, for joining the session. Thanks, Vikas. Thanks, Rahul. Thanks, everyone. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye, Varthi. Bye, everyone. Bye, Rahul.